All right, so today we're gonna take a look at my broken down uh, mini chicken coop. I'm gonna turn that into the brooder coop for the small ones. And uh, I'm gonna give you a look at see what we're doing and kind of run you through that. So stand by. Now I've already taken the liberty of cleaning out the mess that was in that coop. Uh, apparently the former owner was storing some nice bits of uh, steel. You'll find a use for it. And then uh, these big drums, which I can use for water retention or whatnot. So uh, it's going through the door here. Uh, I'm gonna have to rebuild this door <laughs> entirely. It is just about dead. And then if we come in here, we can see this isn't a door on this side. This was meant to be like a ventilation window. Uh, I'm gonna make it a little less ventilated and a little more secure for babies. Uh, all down at the bottom here, you can see that there has been erosion between this building and the one it's built up against. And the reason being is if you look up here, no sort of flashing, no sort of uh, any barrier between the two buildings. So water just sheets down this wall during the rain and rinses it out. So I'm going to have to fill it in with dirt. All right, the other thing, these boards, uh, they're not solid one piece boards. They were made with, let's see if I can get a good look at this. Yeah, it's a little dovetailing and glue. And dovetailing and glue is fine, as long as you're not in a wet environment. But what we have here is a lovely case of the roof being made to leak. And it's leaked uh, all over the boards here. The whole thing's cracked. So I'm gonna have to replace several two by fours And this piece right here and then we're gonna take the bottom here and we're gonna fill out the dirt and make it nice and smooth we're gonna add some sand we're gonna brick it all in so uh, good times good times this was uh, this really needs some love I'm gonna start by taking the ceiling off and going from there uh, here's the outside of it um, you can look up there Let's see where the roof is sagging because the beams just rotted away so I got some two by fours for the inside to help fix all that I've got two by fours here kind of some bad wood basically we're gonna cover this up uh, with plastic and really just make this a lot more weatherproof but still let in light now that I'm up here pulling nails you can get a better idea of how this roof comes in the building and we got foam to go between the flashing that's made for this kind of building this kind of building has these big edges so i'm gonna have to cut some flashing even though i wanted to avoid it but it's just gonna be the way it's gonna be anyways uh yeah you can see where the roof has uh, caved in because of the crappy wood and i have no idea if this was a board or pieces of tree like I have no idea what was going on up here but uh, yeah we're just gonna take all these little rusty nails and pop them right out up here on the ladder in the coop we have pulled off a lot of that old steel and basically that's how you do it you just get on from the outside and work your way across I got all the all the nails along the back side and you can see this wood is just rotted out so that's why we got new stuff and we're definitely going to get stuff that's not glued in the center these are going to be solid boards and we're going to treat them so that they last in the weather better so i got the roof off yay now i gotta get all these sideboards off which means i gotta prize them away from that metal siding because they're just pretty much trashed everywhere but once I get them off, then I can start getting the new ones on. All right, so this was the main support beam for this coop. And as you can see, they, uh, they held it together. 
they didn't even get it straight they didn't even brace it they just kind of held it together with some nails that, or some screws that were almost all the way in and just kind of left it so yeah this thing had to come out well anytime you're doing a project you tend to run into something you didn't plan on so I'm taking these top boards off and they're all rotten and it's tough because I've got to leave the steel in place because the steel is really on here all right that's all well and good but these support beams right here are rotted in this western corner and once it started knocking on stuff the wood literally just fell apart so I'm gonna have to get a couple more beams to replace these because these are just not good and uh, I have no support on the back wall if we don't replace it all right didn't realize that until we got back here working and isn't that how a project always goes it's easy to second guess yourself while you're working on this stuff I took those bottom two support beams out and of course the wall has come down and they had a piece of wood in the back trying to brace the bottom to keep things from digging up under uh, when we actually put some dirt in here and dig it and put some brick in that'll prevent that but uh, here's that bottom board and it literally fell apart and shattered while I was taking it off so you know I was kind of second guessing myself gee do I really need to take that thing off well when it falls apart in your hands yeah it's time to get a new board so we're in this filled in swimming pool here that I've been emptying out for the garden and now I'm taking dirt out and loading it in a little barrel there um, to fill out the floor there in the coop you can see I've been digging lots for the garden so I'm just using this, uh, this nice clay red filter it will work great for the floor there in the coop uh, as a good base layer and then I'll show you in a moment uh, what we're doing and how it's looking now that it's uh, getting rehabbed well it's starting to get kind of dark but so before I load this in let's show you what we got so see now we got dirt all the way to the corner here and we still need more you can see where the uh, the whole building was eroding out because of the way the, the rainfall was so we're just going to fix that and get all this dirt in here and get that floor nice and low before we brick it in we got everything a growing farm needs to rehab a uh, coop even though some of the stuff like this foam we got here isn't actually going to be exactly what we need because it turns out that uh, the steel that it was made with is weird no one uses that stuff anyways uh, so we're gonna grab these boards here and lay them out and we're gonna start putting uh, Thompson's water seal on them so as it turns out um, a lot of the boards were rotted because they're in a place you know right up under that tin uh, water does leak through the nail holes eventually so if we seal the wood we'll get a lot better product uh, that'll hopefully last a lot longer plus this wood you know won't rot out at the glue joints so set that up we got the Thompson's we have a brush a roller we have all the wood laid out so now we simply roll it out and get it on there nice even coat let it dry a bit we'll flip it over and go from there all right here we are now uh, question is how do you do the sides well you just put everything on its side you flip it over and you just come right around just right on the side there we go just like that so day two of this business I didn't start early because stuff to do but um, got a little light back and so I'm going to show you what I finished on the, uh, the floor here and then we're gonna start with the ceiling and go from there so I ended up putting a brace in this bottom little hole right there that is the uh, top of a toilet tank that was sitting here on the property and it looks a little funny but it's ceramic and so it will not rot and no chicks can squeeze out and it's gonna be real hard pressed for anything to dig through it so it actually worked pretty well with the right size and then you can see the floor here is actually nice and graded out so when we put sand down and put bricks down uh, that should work pretty well we don't have to put a whole lot of sand just enough to make the floor you know even where we can and uh, we don't want to raise the the floor too much because uh, the under part of the roof uh, I'm tall I'll smack my head all right so here we go uh, now we're gonna start working on 
the beams for the ceiling. So these two beams are going to be the main uh, cross beams for the front and the back of the coop. They're pressure treated. I didn't need to treat them with Thompson's water seal. You may ask yourself, why didn't you buy all pressure treated wood? Uh, if I had more money, I would have. But uh, pressure treated lumber is real expensive right now. So, you know, I got a budget. I got to work with this. So we're going to go out there and make sure that the measurements are correct, cut them down, and then get them up. So all we're going to do is we got to cut the beams for the back part of the wall. So I measured 9 feet 7 inches and then get yourself a T-square. Super useful. Bada boom, bada bing. We're going to keep those two boards together. Because all I'm going to do is slide them down. Put them under the chop saw here. And we need both boards at once. We already know that our measurement for the top of the board was nine foot seven, so we're going to make sure that the middle and the bottom have the same measurement. Oh, lovely! Hmm, I blew a circuit. So we have put the cross members up. You can see we got the pressure treated 2x6 that's taken most of the way to the roof and 2x6 in the back there. You know, that's really going to hold up a lot better than that poor besotted 2x4 I pulled out. And then we've got the back and bottom now. Uh, some, of the, some of those lower boards along the side, they're really not in great condition, but, you know, they should, they should do what we need them to do. And then uh, we're going to work on the other top boards, and that'll be next. Now... With a bunch of these handy dandy hurricane straps that's what they're called and we are putting the rafters on this time in a vertical fashion as opposed to horizontal um, and that's going to give us this gap between the wall and the ceiling and that's actually useful for our purposes because what we want is we want a little bit of ventilation in this coop especially at the top uh, to let heat out and moisture out you don't want your chickens getting too uh, heaped up with a bunch of moisture now I've marked on these rafters, or on these, these uh, support boards where my rafters are going to go, just like that, uh, basically by taking the tin and putting it on and figuring out where it overlaps. And then we're just going to put more of these rafters on. Uh, each one I put up here, I'm going to put it up here, uh, mark how it sits, then nail it onto the board, put the board back on and there we go all right so more rafters to come look now we've got rafters so one of the lessons we learned is make sure you're putting the correct end of the rafter with the long end towards the barn there uh, as you can see we're going to have quite a bit of space between the roof and here we'll fill it up with a little wire just keep you know naughty things out but by and large yeah rafters okay now we're gonna get some steel and start measuring for the flashing that's gonna go uh, keep the rain from shuttling down between the roof and the building side here here we have the flashing that I'm gonna use on the side of the building and what I've done is I've taken a nail and this handy dandy little guy and we've just cut out, or we've marked out the part of the steel that's got to get cut out with everybody's friend, tin snips. With tin snips, it's fairly straightforward. Come in here, bear down, nice even cut, and we'll cut that all out. Well, now we have some cutouts made here in the flashing. So we're going to go put this out up against the wall and see how that works. So as you can see, it's been raining and crappy out today. I didn't get to work yesterday, but I did finish this back end of construction fabric right here. This is going to be between the roof and the siding. And it's going to let there be quite a bit of ventilation 
uh, for the coop, but not let one of the critters in. Uh, so, like I said, it's it's kind of wet and nasty out today. So rather than work on the roof, and let everything's wet, let it dry off. And so I'm going to start with this door because I can work on that in the workshop. Um, let's take a look at this. So this door here is just beat to hell. And in serious need of renovation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it off the hinges here and take it inside and recreate it with new materials uh, that looks less janky. All right, let's go ahead and uh, pop this sucker off and get it inside. So we have our door here and put it on the sawhorses in the workshop so I can measure it out and start cutting wood to make parts of it. I really didn't want to take the hinges off with the door. I would rather have left them on that corner post because that corner post, while still solid enough for a few years left, uh, is dying in parts of it and basically I will have to put these back on at different points on the door so that there will be different screw holes in the post so I can actually put this thing on without having the screws pull out of the wood. And I have a kit we're going to use to make these corner bins instead of cutting a piece of plywood uh, on crappy 2x4s. We're going to use a good 2x4 all the way up here and we're going to put some 90 degree angles in here with metal to try and hold this together. But this top is not at a 90 degrees. The, the roof slants and so this door is going to slant. And that's really okay. Uh, we can make some braces for that. But at least the bottom we'll have with a uh, straight 90 degree bend. And then we'll try and oil the hinges up and make the hardware better. We're still going to put a piece of plywood down here and we're going to use some of this uh, clear plastic sheeting for the window up here. It's all fun and games till you open the kit you bought to figure out the, uh, the parts and you realize that this frame is actually stuck on the uh, stuck on the hinge. So I could use this frame and then the other frame without the hinge. Make you over here, see. So for the side of the, well, this is meant to be, it's meant to be an easy gate, but you know, you can make a barn door out of this thing. Um, I could put it on this side and make it work just like that. And then still have this door fit flush with that upper board. Or I can instead leave a gap between the door and the upper board. And then have a couple of new hinges. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put the hinge up there. I'm going to make the door only as long as this side, the shorter side. And basically I'll have a gap between the very top of the door and that top board and that's fine and if I need to cover that in with a little construction fabric I have a little more left over so we can do that yeah so this is this is how a plan changes on the fly because it turns out the parts you bought weren't exactly built how you thought they were so here we go we'll give this a show a little progress here on the door so what I've done is to measure this out to make sure it fits is I just literally put it over the old door and just measured off the pieces off the boards here. And here is where you can see, so the board, or the door now is going to be a straight 90 degrees. And so we're gonna have just a little more gappage between this uh, and the top, but I don't think three inches is really going to matter to any chickens that matter. And it's gonna be real hard for stuff to climb up this thing. So yeah, we should be good there. All right. so. Now what I have to do is I have to treat these boards because uh, this is not new lumber. This is stuff I grabbed out of all the, here I'll show you, all the scraps I got out here. My little breezeway here is just full of junk. The bikes are mine, all that. Doors, doors, random steel, wood, lots of wood, random shower doors. Like All this stuff got left out here. 
uh, just, you know, 40 years of living the previous owner just could not get it all out of here. And that's fine. I'll make use of it. Uh, so that's exactly what I'm going to do here is I'm going to make use of these older boards. And here we go. So, yeah, all I got to do is I'm going to go ahead and treat these uh, with the Thompson's water seal just like I did with the other boards. Uh, they'll get painted eventually. So with the Thompson's water seal and paint, I should be, should be pretty solid and weatherproof. Just taking the Thompson's water seal and sealing these boards. And Thompson's water seal says not to put it on and you expect rain in the next 48 hours. I am uh, disregarding that with abandon. But this is why I'm working indoors today. So all I can hope is that it doesn't weigh all doesn't the rain does not wash away all of the dirt that I moved and leveled out in the floor there. If it does, I'll just have to move it and you know level more dirt and move more dirt but you know one can hope makes me glad that i did thompson's water seal all those boards now that they're out there sitting in the weather for a few days until i can get the ceiling put back on yeah welcome to springtime though this is it that's what you get because i wanted to get this done today went ahead and did the Thompson's water seal. It's mostly dry. I didn't give it 12 hours or anything, but I also don't have to put it up outside just yet. Anyways, I wanted to show how these went on nice and easy. A couple of screws. And these also went on. Got those nice hinges and come all the way back so the door can open. Got it on both sides. There we go. So the Risers for the door in. Now we're going to put the cross beams. Well, here we go. We got the uh, cross braces. And these, uh, uh, these are doing a real good job of keeping this door square and steady. I like it. Uh, now we're going to put, put a piece of plywood across about half the front, a little over half the front. We're going to install a door and then we'll put a window in the top with that uh, plastic over there and yeah we should have a nice door here we are we got a piece of plywood that has obviously been used as a stencil in the past uh, but that is half our door the other side is a little smoother and probably better wood so but i screwed up the cut and it messed up this back corner so i'd rather have the unmessed up corner facing the outside the whole thing's going to get painted at some point anyway, so no big deal. But it's all been treated with Thompson's water seal, so uh, there we go. Uh, next step, plastic. Here we are. I got the vinyl corrugated paneling on there. That should work really well. Um, certainly no chickens are going to bonk their way out and should keep critters from coming in. I also put the casp off of the old door on, so now I'm going to set this thing up, uh, we're going to let it dry further uh, because we do have the water seal on it and I still have enough light thanks to daylight savings today. Yay! We work on the siding of the roof a little bit. Okay, it's time for another edition of how did I screw this project up and just figure it out. So if you see behind me here, I got these hurricane straps and I didn't realize they weren't supposed to lift the rafter and the more I got thinking about it, the more I thought that's... That just doesn't seem like a lot of metal holding that up. And then I got to looking online because I just kept thinking, man, I've done that wrong. And, and sure enough, you know, I can say never be afraid to go back and confirm you've screwed something up because I totally did. <sighs> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab one of these little guys. Uh, I'm going to make some shims out of two by fours because quite honestly, I like the mistake I've made. Uh, as you can see, I've got a little space between me and the rafter, and by the time I put bricks in on the floor, this floor is going to get raised a little bit, uh, so in order to prevent me braining myself on the regular, I do like the lift, but I'm going to support it with a shim, so I've got some handy-dandy parts to fix that, and so I shall. Great. So, 
I've got these little L-shaped brackets. I'm just going to put these right here and make sure they don't go anywhere. So, yeah, I can fix this mistake. It's just a stupid mistake. But, on the upside, the boards will not go anywhere. About $10 in parts and an hour later, and I got it fixed. Okay, so now my rafters are up there. And I can do chin-ups off these things, so, good. Back to the walls. Got this open side here. It's, it's not as open for the air, but it definitely lets a lot of light into this. I took the boards that were bracing that off because they were rotted out, and I put some new ones on. And I used a little, uh, a bit of that water seal so we can see there where it's braced up at the bottom there there's a little bit of a gap here between the building and what I'll do is further down when I break stuff in I'll put a couple bricks up top there and that should keep little babies from running out uh, I'm going to back it up with a little bit of, of that construction fabric and keep anybody from running out of there uh, and that should work real well for there that's going to let a lot of light into the building so now I've got the, all the siding back on. You can see here on the corner where it didn't quite meet up like it did. And I think that's simply because when I put the boards that fit uh, and weren't all bent, the building actually kind of bowed back out. So I'm going to repaint this thing anyways. So we just got one little strip of unpainted metal. But yeah, now it's time to... Uh, I'll wire this one little section of hardware cloth together and then I'm going to start putting the roof on. Now that I've got the walls together, I was able to get the floor a lot more leveled and hey look, we got a ceiling. Got it wired in the back. I don't have these gaps wired. They're just not that big. A very dedicated rat might try to get in, or a squirrel. I'm not too worried about that. The roof is on. I've got to brace this one spot here. A little JB Weld Marine. We'll keep that level. Uh, but I managed to prevent that with the rest of the spots. This bowed up a little bit. But I'd rather bow up than down. Right, we can see the roof looks pretty good, pretty solid. Now we're gonna do the flashing. I really had envisioned putting on the flashing and then doing the roof. However, it was real hard to get that roof taut. So I'm just gonna end up having to climb up on that thing and get the flashing done. Got the flashing up. And all that goo you see up there is great stuff insulation. Let's go over here, get a little better look at it. Go over to the other side, get a better look from the top. It's goopy and that's okay because the roof isn't super level so the flashing isn't super level and that goop uh, the, the great stuff will harden and then i can scrape that extra stuff off and it won't look quite so uh, <laughs> like a cottage cream like a cottage cheese factory exploded but essentially what that should do is allow the water that hits the, my workshop there to hit the flashing and then uh, instead of running straight down the side onto my what are going to be bricks and filling up my chicken coop with water it should run off the roof of course proof's in the pudding check it out next time it rains here we are the next day a better view of that foam the great stuff now that it's dried uh, I took my handy dandy garden hoe here to reach out and scrape off a lot of the overspray the downside of this stuff is it's not pretty like i could if i really wanted to get up here sand it down pretty and paint it and we may eventually paint over it but for right now uh, this is good it's supposed to rain tomorrow uh pretty good so assuming it does i'll get a real good sense of how well this stuff works to keep the rain out from in, inside there so yeah we'll uh, check and check back and see tomorrow and maybe I'll get to put some bricks in and try to get this project 
I'm starting to get it wrapped up. Well, there is nothing like testing a theory <sighs> the very day after you fix it. All right, so we had a huge rainstorm. That's all pollen that washed up on the dirt. Lovely. Uh, yeah, we had a big rainstorm this morning. And you can see where the floor washed out again. Like this is literally dirt just washed right out of where I had it all set in. Which means that water was coming in probably a little bit through here, but also it felt like through the roof. The thing is, is the rainstorm happened while I was laying in bed half asleep, you know, five in the morning, six in the morning. So I didn't actually get up and come out here and see where the water was coming through. Um, you can definitely see the back edge. Essentially the rain water washed along the outside and washed a lot of the dirt out. Um, so I'm going to need to put bricks on that outside back edge here. We'll show you. Um, I'm definitely going to need to add some bricks here just to keep that from washing out in the gully washers we get sometimes. So that's, that's reasonable. We can do that. Uh, but what really concerns me is I took all that effort to put that flashing up there and I, it really looks again, if you look at the dirt, you know, back here, I don't see much washed out. And here I just see a lot of, a lot of washout. So it's either the, it came from here or up here. So how do we test this? I'm going to get a hose and start spraying it on top of the roof up here. We're going to take that hose, we're going to spray it on top of the roof, we're going to spray it all through here, and we're going to see if that water gets my wall wet. If that water gets the wall real wet, we know it's shooting down right onto here, we can take care of it. Um, if it's shooting through here, again, I can brick that up and uh, keep the water, but I, I don't think the water's necessarily running right up along here because... Again, this board back of here is relatively dry, and then right there is where it gets wet. So, I'm going to check this out. Well, I don't have anyone to spray the hose while I take video in here, but you can see where the water has run down and collected all through this wall. And this is frustrating because, you know, I spent probably a good 25 30 bucks on this extra flashing and all the stuff for it to make sure it wouldn't leak and do exactly what the problem was before just you know running the <laughs> running the floor right out of my building here um however uh, all that means to me is more more foam more insulation more big gap filler uh, you know, previously I was trying to be judicious in my application. Uh, now we're just going to go ham. So we'll see what we get. Stopping erosion in this place is going to take understanding the water flow. So I think perhaps some water had built up here. Uh, you can see where the dirt has mounted up on this side and so it really protects it. But I have mounted up dirt and added some bricks keep the erosion away and I have now added bits of concrete I had around here concrete pavers bricks essentially what I'm uh, doing here is making sure that when the water runs off the roof here and it falls right down onto concrete not the dirt and washing that away because that's what happened last uh, this last rainstorm is the dirt you know it's it's not super packed in because I just put it in and the water just washed it right away so we put some stuff back here. Plus, this should keep predators from trying to dig up under this thing. Uh, when I put bricks on the other side of the wall, that'll be a double layer. So, yeah, we're starting to figure out how this works. Um, I'm going to get some more great stuff. And I'll spray that, and I'll show you when that's done. So, for now, we're going to work on sanding and bricking the floor in here uh, to prevent this muddy slop. This is the work of a couple bags of sand and a rake. Essentially, we need half an inch deep, uh, so each one half cubic foot bag of sand will cover about 12 square feet. That's about 24 square feet. Basically, I've got six bags 
to do the whole floor and then two more to get between the spaces and the bricks. So here we go. Here we uh, here we started out. This is why we don't want all this stuff raining down here uh, to wash out the sand under the bricks because that's really going to cause a problem. So now we get some bricks. Start laying this in. We're going to make ourselves a real floor. Now here's a progress shot of the bricks in place. Several rows down. You'll notice right here down in this crack I'll need to put some rubble and bits. Maybe some little bits in there to throw some sand on. And I haven't put sand in the cracks yet because I really just need to shore up the edges. But uh, I have lots of concrete rubble from other piles of bricks. I can definitely find some stuff to throw in there. But here we go. This is, this is how it's going to be. I definitely have to watch my head when I walk on these things um, towards the back, towards about the middle of the coop on back. There, I, uh, I tend to smack my head. So, uh, fortunately, you know, if we got brooder boxes and stuff through here, shouldn't have to walk back where I'll bump my head too much. But, you know, uh, certainly much better flooring than dirt. I'm going to throw wood shavings on this, and it'll be a lot easier to clean. So, as I said before, I tried to be sparing in my use of the great stuff previously uh, after yesterday's test this is now all nice and dry not just tacky but this has had time to cure um i was no longer judicious in my use of this stuff and did in fact go ham um yeah, it looks a lot better i will test it again when i'm done with the floor as you can see I have a great deal done on the floor, just a little strip to go. My back is angry at me because I was hauling bricks yesterday and I hauled too many at a time rather than, you know, take a few and move and take a few. Oh no, I'm going to haul them all. And yeah, my back says no. But that said, I'm pretty happy with how this has turned out so far. Um, I'll get a little update when I get the bricks done and then start getting, again, little tiny pieces in the side. In those little corners and edges and then uh, start sanding this sucker in and, and we'll have a functional floor. So I've got all the bricks in and I've taken little bits of brick rubble that I've had and I've filled in the sides and corners and ends basically making sure that little chicks won't fall into the corners and also lessening the amount of sand that I need to put in the bricks. So there's one bag of sand, and I basically spread it out here on the bricks. Now I'm going to sweep it uh, nice and neat into all the cracks, and that should keep the bricks from banging together as we walk on them, and should also keep uh, the bedding we use, which is generally just wood chips, wood shavings, um, from getting stuck in between the bricks and getting all nasty. Uh, so the bricks will have a nice clean surface, should have sand between them, it'll keep them in place, and keep us from catching all the nasty organics. And there we go. Um, I have one other bag of sand. I may need to get some more, but uh, I'll show you when we get this stuff swept in. So here we go. We have bricks that have been sanded in. They're a lot more stable. This is a solid floor I'm walking on. Um, I did come to the conclusion I need another bag. That's uh, that's not super surprising. Uh, I wasn't real sure how many it would take to sand this in. And, you know, two seem to be about the right number. Apparently it's three. But, uh, yeah, I'll get another bag of sand and this will be done. But, yeah, so this is going to be a nice floor. Uh, the thing about having the bricks this way is if water does get on it, uh, it has a place to go. It can drain through the sand drain out through the dirt and uh, it's gonna back up if we drop a whole lot of water on here but it won't sit here and rot like a, I would worry about with a wooden floor and I've had that issues uh, in the past in our old coop we had wooden floors it was elevated and that worked out well except for the rats got into the elevation part so here uh, any rats are gonna have to dig directly into the floor and I will deal with that uh, if it comes about in the meantime, I have a nice solid floor. Last bit for today's effort since I'm out of sand. What I did here was made 
little overhang out of the leftover vinyl siding I had. And the reason is, is weather systems around here, they move west to east. This being the west side, uh, it gets a lot of rain and I, I really do think a lot of the problems I had uh, this past rainstorm was rain just getting shoved up uh, in that gap right there. Even though there's a little bit of an overhang from the from the roof, there's just not a whole lot. So I just made a little extra overhang there. Uh, you can see where the wind, when it blows, it doesn't pop it up too much. It, I think it should stand. Um, but it definitely still allows some ventilation through there while keeping a lot of the really nasty stuff out. So that should help. I noticed that there was some condensation along this board underneath this piece of vinyl. So uh, I think I probably had water running straight sheeting down this thing and that should help prevent that. So uh, yeah, after we get some sand in, in the floor tomorrow, we'll test it again with a hose and see what we got. But uh, we're getting there. We're getting towards the end of this. This is, this is looking good. Well, here we are about two weeks after I started this crazy operation and we're almost done. So uh, here, we'll turn it around here and show you the floor that we finally got done. It looks a whole lot better than it did. So now all of the bricks are sanded in and you can see the little brick bits I put in, in the edges and right back here, under here where it didn't quite fit. It's all filled with sand. So it took a whole nother bag, which is uh, not surprising. And so now when I couple this, with the shavings we're going to put on the floor for niceness, we should prevent little chicks from getting stuck in uh, corners and cracks. So what's left is putting on a little bit of a uh, hardware cloth here. And the door. And I'll leave the door till last, uh, just because then it'll be a nice easy thing. I hope it'll fit. Uh, <laughs> it sat there for days waiting on me to, to, to give it the old test. So today is uh, the, the day of truth for that. So here's what I'm talking about. Just a little bit of hardware construction cloth. You know, we got some stones at the bottom there. It doesn't look like a chicken can pop out of there, and they certainly can't, but chicks are tiny and amazing what they can floof through, and guinea chicks or anything small, if we do like quail or pheasants or anything, they're, they're really tiny and they can really pop out those holes. So, you know, that's two foot tall. That's going to keep anything of any size from just popping out. And now, uh, now we'll do the door. And here we have hung a door. So the hardest part was trying to get these two to line up, but it swings and you got to lift it just a little bit to get that on there. Uh, this needs a little bit of just yeah, just like that. So it's it's not perfect, but being as I did have to watch where I put the screws down here because that board starts getting rotten. Uh, at least it's pretty good up here. Pretty happy with it. There is, like I said, there's a little bit of a gap because I made the door a 90 degree angle versus slanted at the top. But again, no chicks are getting through that. Like if, if they're flying that high, they need to go in the big run anyways and again no chickens are going to get through that unless they're tiny little bantams and worry about that when we get there but right now i think this will make a fine brooder coop so the only thing i have left to do is uh test this sucker with the hose and uh see how watertight i got that ugly ugly great stuff seal up in there we'll see how that works so yeah we're gonna leave the door closed for that and spray some water in here and see how we got it so this is this is looking all right. This is looking like we have an actual working coop versus broken down piece of trash stuck on my workshop. So I sprayed this place with a hose real good. Uh, I shot the arc of water way up in the air to make sure that it was coming down as, as near as I could uh, imitate terrain. And you can see where there is Still some leakage between the roof there. Um, being as this is not a flat metal wall, this is not something that's easy to put flashing on or nice sticky foam backing. 
I sprayed for a few minutes and basically got a little drip of water down here. Just got a little bit of water down in the front and there's a leak right here. That's obviously, uh, let's see if we can see it without getting too close. Uh, anyways, it, it's, 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 um, you know, where the nail is holding and, and, and there's just, you can see a little bit of a drip there between the two segments, but all in all, if we have a little bit of a leak here and there, I think we'll be okay. Um, where I used a little phone to to stop leaks seems to work fairly well. Um, it's not super dry in here, but one, we're going to have water in here anyways, so obviously we know to put the water bucket right there. Uh, secondarily, it's a lot less leaky than it was. So it's supposed to rain next week. Um, I absolutely will check it then. There's a little bit of a leak on the back corner there. And again, uh, where I sprayed some foam to try to stop the leak, it's still coming through a little bit. Um, it's not super great there. And you can see down here, it is a little leaky. So this is not the most watertight coop in existence. My hope is that when I build the big coop, I can make it a lot more watertight. But this, I think, will do, especially considering, you know, what we're looking to do for this. Just put a brooder in the corner where stuff won't be. And you can see where drips splattered everywhere because it's just bare brick instead of having a little bit of uh, bedding just to absorb the moisture. I am happy that I didn't wash anything away. You know, it didn't wash away sand. It's not washing out there. I think this will be a lot better. So, here we are. We have rebuilt the inside of this brooder coop. Or chicken coop. We're going to use it as a brooder coop. I'm going to make a full-size chicken coop out back. But, yeah. Took a lot of the rotten wood off. Put on new stuff that I think will last a lot better. There we go. So with a lot of time and effort, you know, a couple weeks, a few hundred bucks in materials, trial and error, a bunch of mistakes, you too can make a mediocre job. <laughs> I mean, it's certainly better than it was. You know, I, I'd get a better result if I tore the whole thing down and started over, but I don't have the money to do that. What I do have the money to do is convert it into something that's uh, at least passable. So that's what I've done. Um, it'll sure work for our purposes for now, and then uh, we'll fill you in on the uh, on the next coop coming. <laughs>